Hey guys, Jeremy here with JM Aero Service and Repair. Today we are going to be working on Red Fox and we have a uh, aft prop shaft seal that needs to be replaced and um, I'm going to show you guys how to do it using uh, the proper jigs and what I believe are the proper techniques I've had good results with over the years and uh, hopefully it'll help you guys with your repair. Last week we discovered a slight leak coming from the aft seal right there and so in order to get that off we are going to remove the prop the fuel pump on this particular plane since it's a in-flight adjustable electric prop we're going to remove the brush assembly and the associated wiring and pull that off to the side and uh, from there we'll have good access to the gearbox uh, to complete the rest of the process i'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff stripped off and we will be back shortly. Okay, we have our fuel pump removed and we have our brush block assembly removed. The next step is to loosen and then remove the two M8 bolts on the bottom part of the gearbox and the eight M6 bolts that go around the outside of the gearbox. Okay, so now we have all of our gearbox bolts removed and we have the gearbox remover slide puller installed and that's held on to the gearbox using the two M8 bolts um, that are built into the casting here. Um, if some of you guys are running alternators then you would have had to remove the alternator for this part of the process in which case you'll have access to these bolts. Uh, to remove it you basically want to put a hand under here support the gearbox and then take the slide hammer portion and pull it back with a couple quick taps and be ready to rock the gearbox down and out to uh, try to catch some of that oil but the rest is going to drip down past the oil pump and hopefully you have good aim into your pan. We have the gearbox removed and we are not going to be disassembling the gearbox today. I'll save that for another video. Plus this particular gearbox, uh, I think less than about 150 hours ago, we were inside of it. And uh, part of the reason we are replacing this seal is uh, pushing the prop shaft in and out of the seal it tends to put a lot of wear and tear on it. This gearbox has been on and off a few times. So we are going to uh, just replace the seal and leave this alone for now. Everything seems to be running smooth. But one thing I do want to point out is anytime you have the gearbox removed, even if you're not disassembling it, couple of external things you want to look for are the distance between the two keepers. You want to make sure that the gaps on both sides are nice and uniform and uh, that'll tell you that there hasn't been any sort of prop strikes or any excessive chattering going on or also any signs of loss of friction torque. And then you also just want to check the inside of the gearbox and make sure that there's no signs of metal um, and that everything is spinning freely and that you don't feel any graininess inside of the bearing. So gearbox is removed. We have the PTO end of the crankshaft exposed. We have the small gear, which is held on by a big nut and lock washer. And then the reason that we're in here today is we are gonna pop off this circlip, pull out this bearing and replace the seal that's back inside of here. The snap ring removal itself is pretty straightforward. You just want to make sure and have yourself a good uh, quality pair of snap ring pliers. If you're using some uh, bent ones or you know cheaper Harbor Freight ones, um, then beside, because of the size of the circlip, it could be a little tricky. And basically what you want to do is just go inside, compress, and pull out. It's one of those things that's actually a lot easier if you're not holding the camera when you do it. So I had to set the... Uh, camera down and uh, what you really want to do is make sure that you're putting enough inward pressure on the snap ring so that it doesn't want to uh, pop off the little tips on you. So we're going to go ahead and set it aside and this can be reused. All right we've cleaned off our crankcase housing. We wanted to make sure that that was nice and clean so that our jig uh, is sitting flush uh, against the case. Uh, to clean that off we use a little bit of scotch bright, a little bit of elbow grease, and then uh, clean it with some alcohol and we'll do one final alcohol wipe down before we put the final sealant on when it all goes back together. 
Uh, one of the reasons you want to do that first also is because the scotch Brite is going to make some contamination uh, inside of this gearbox area as you're scrubbing away the old sealant and you don't want that stuff falling down onto the new seal or in the bearing. So it's good to take care of that particular part of the procedure now. If you take a look at the back of the gearbox housing, you can see that it's not actually a perfect circle. There's two ears on the left and right side, and that is put there for the tool that is used for extracting the bearing. And what happens is basically this goes on the back side of that seal and bearing and is held in place by a large uh, M10 bolt. And once we get that installed, then what we'll do is we will come out here and we will hold this stationary and start spinning the nut, which will pull the bearing and the seal outwards from the case. It makes it real easy to do. Okay, we got our extractor jig installed and we are ready to start twisting this wrench in a clockwise direction, which will pull on the uh, shaft and pull the bearing and seal out. Okay, we have our bearing and seal removed. The next step is we are gonna pull this out. We're gonna remove our extractor jig and the bearing and the seal. And then we are going to remove the nut from this side of the shaft and screw it onto this side of the shaft because we will be using a slightly uh, different procedure when we go to push everything back in. Um, a lot of times you can get away with inspecting and cleaning and prepping this area without having to remove uh, the entire uh, jig assembly and that makes it a little easier. We have the old bearing here that we are going to reuse. It seems to be in pretty good condition. So what we're gonna do is clean it up and the next step, which is very important, is to put it in the freezer for about 20, 30 minutes or so and it'll actually allow it to shrink a little bit and makes it a little easier to slide it back into the case without uh, any excessive galling or damage to either component. We have our new seal here from Leaf. Thank you, Leaf, for coming through. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it out and we are gonna dress the outside of the seal and the back, very outside edge of the seal with uh, Honda Bond 4. And what it is is it's a semi-drying liquid uh, sealant uh, that is used for sealing applications. Uh, another product that I've used in the past is 3 Bond 1211, which is also uh, works well, also a semi-drying uh, silicon-based uh, sealer. Okay, so this is what you're going for. You basically don't want the liquid sealant on the outside of the seal because that's just gonna rub off when you press it in anyways and move over to where the bearing is. So what you wanna do is you wanna put it on the outside and when the seal gets pushed all the way back into the case, it'll actually create a nice little sealing lip on that corner all the way around. Okay, what we ended up doing is we put a little bit of lithium grease around the outside of the seal to facilitate it sliding into the case. And the seal gets put onto the uh, insertion nipple, I think they call it. And you also want to make sure that on the inside of the seal, you put some lithium grease so that the insertion jig doesn't damage it. You want to keep that all well lubricated inside and outside of the seal. If you're doing this for the first time, um, the number one most important step is remember that you are creating a lot of mechanical advantage uh, using the threads uh, to push this in. And you can only go in so far until you get the back of the crankcase where it tends to be relatively thin back here. And so you wanna make sure that you're not pushing too hard. You basically wanna go till the seal is seated and then just a slight amount of pressure to make sure it's a nice tight fit. Uh, without damaging the crankcase. So be very careful on this part of the procedure. The seal is installed and looks to be seated. The next step is we're gonna take our chilled bearing and it is non-directional. And we're gonna slide it over the nipple. And then where you're gonna screw this in and get this kind of started in place so that it seems nice and square and then we will start pushing the bearing in. 
we're gonna go ahead and continue to twist this clockwise, which is going to push the bearing further into the case. And again, be very sensitive on the amount of tension that's needed. Uh, Cause once you hit that seal, you wanna make sure and stop. Um, and then of course, we're going to remove this and confirm that we have enough space for the snap ring to go back in. And uh, that'll ensure that we're in the right place with the bearing. Looks like we got the clearance on the bearing right. The snap ring just popped right back into place. You want to do a very good inspection and just make sure that it's seated all the way in the groove because the last thing you want is this thing popping out uh, in flight. That could be pretty catastrophic. So uh, make sure that's in place. And we've already uh, cleaned and prepped our outside of the crankcase housing. And while we were waiting for the bearing to chill, we also did the uh, gearbox housing itself. Um, and we've hit it with some alcohol. So the next step is we're gonna use a little bit of lithium grease. We're gonna put it on the aft side of the prop shaft seal, make sure that's well lubricated. And then we're also gonna take some, and if you notice, the seal is actually a double seal, kind of creates a V shape inside of there. What we wanna do is uh, get some grease in there and kind of fill up that entire valley uh, so that there's no air or anything inside of that gap. It's also worth mentioning that before you apply the lithium grease to the sealing surface, it's a good idea to take a good quality metal polish and uh, just kind of polish up this area and make sure that there's no burrs or anything there uh, that could possibly be damaging the um, new seal. You want to be careful not to take off any metal, uh, so just be very gentle with it as you're going. Um, I don't recommend sandpaper or scotch Bright per se. Uh, if anything, just um, some polish and a little extra elbow grease. We have our surface area prepped, and now we're going to use um, either Loctite 5910 or the Permatex Right Stuff. Either the gray or black uh, work very well for this. And we're going to take a little bit of sealant and we're just going to pat it around the edges. And you don't want to go too thick on the layer because you don't want a big bead to squeeze inside of the engine. You basically just want to pat it like that and that'll allow the perfect amount of sealant. And just make sure, especially if you're using a gray sealant, to make sure that you're getting the entire area all the way around. Okay, we got a nice even coat all the way around. Uh, this particular area right here does not need to have any sort of sealant um, because it doesn't mate up against anything and you want to make sure that you're definitely getting adequate sealant right here and right here on the crankcase seams and also in between these four lower bolts because that's a real uh, high prone leak area on these 912s. We have our gearbox back on. We installed the eight M6 bolts all the way around and the two lower M8 bolts. As far as torques for these go, they are not actually in the section of the maintenance manual that discusses removing the gearbox. You have to go to the section that has generic torques for these fasteners and the M6s are 90 inch pounds and the M8s are 17.7 foot pounds. And when you torque them, I like to run everything down, get them all very lightly seated, and then start with the two M6 bolts and kind of go in a star pattern um, and finish with the M8 bolts, then go back and do the final torque on the M8s and then the final torque on the M6s, just to make sure everything is seated properly. 